So today we're gonna to be talking about paying off student loans. So stick around. Hello fellow wealth builders and welcome back to the True Financials channel. My name is Dennis and if you are new here, we love to talk about personal finance, investing and retirement to help build your wealth. So definitely consider subscribing today and do not forget to hit that little bell icon to get notifications when new videos and live streams go up. So there is a company called CFSI uh, and they are all about financial health. I will have a link in the description box down below for you to check out their website. They have a lot of great information for you to check out, um, especially when it comes to this process of being more financially fit, which is what we're all about here on this channel. CFSI has some statistics that I wanna talk about a little bit before we get into the nitty gritty on this topic. Uh, so one of the first statistics, and I'm gonna go ahead and read them off here so you can see me kind of glancing to the side. Um, they say that nearly 75% of students are not sure that they could come up with $1,000 within the next month if an unexpected emergency were to happen. That's huge. That's a lot of people that are not certain that they can take care of a thousand dollar emergency. So the next statistic that they have says 54% agree or strongly agree with the following statement. I always find myself living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and then we have 31% agree or strongly agree with the following statement. I have too much other debt right now, such as credit card debt, car loan debt, or money owed to other family members or friends. And then the last one, it says 32% disagree or strongly disagree with the following statement. I am satisfied with my current financial situation. Now, based off of all of those statistics, it really kind of paints a picture of showing where people are once they get out of college. So of course we wanna be financially fit regardless of where we are currently in life, but right now, you know, this subject is all about those getting out of college and getting their life started, but unfortunately not being on the right foot about it. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit more in detail with how to get out of student loan debt. All right, so let me know in the comment section down below if you just finished graduating college and are now paying off this student loan debt. So one of the biggest things that I think that we have in our society, and this is just getting very real with everything when it comes to our personal finances, is that whole notion of keeping up with the Joneses, but I think that's a little outdated now. I think we're keeping up with social. And what I mean by that is the Joneses might live next door and you might be able to see them every once in a while, but keeping up with social is being able to see everybody's social life at all times and being able to see inside of their lives so I have a really hard time being very sympathetic with someone that's saying that they live paycheck to paycheck and yet they're on their $900 smartphone having that kind of complaint so I need to make sure that people understand that we have to look at it from a mere perspective of saying okay what are we doing to be having an impact on our lives and living to this paycheck to paycheck or not being able to attack the debt the way we wish we could but when you look into the mirror at yourself and say okay maybe it might be me one of the biggest things that most people tend to look at is saying my income is what's causing me not to be able to achieve greater things, not being able to achieve, you know, paying off debt or it's causing me to live paycheck to paycheck. But the problem is that as people increase their income, their expenditures go up just about the same, which means that they live the same type of lifestyle and they still live paycheck to paycheck. So a lot of times it's not the income portion that that's the issue. It's more of the expenditures. It's what we're actually spending our money on. What we deem as our needs versus our wants is what's usually causing those kind of problems. So when we're looking at this mirror of saying, okay, well, what is it that I'm doing? We need to look at our, our wants and understand, you know, are they really you know, important to us to be able to achieve financial freedom and actually be able to live a life where you feel comfortable not living paycheck to paycheck and having money for those emergencies when they do arise. So how do you look and see where to cut your expenses? And that's gonna be with the next step is creating a budget. Now, if you're not a fan of budgets, I gotta tell you, budgets really help you out because they give you a financial snapshot of where everything is for you. I know a lot of people look at budgets as a way to constrain them and feel like they are not gonna be able to spend what they want to spend, which first and foremost is the cause of most people's situations of being living paycheck to paycheck. But when you look at the snapshot and actually build up to uh, knowing where all your money is coming in, where all your money is going out, you actually have so much more control over your money that you'll actually be surprised on how much you'll be able to have to be able to live a life that you feel comfortable with, but yet still be able to attack debt and be able to be financially free in the future. So I'll have a video link right over here on how to create a budget. So that way, if you're not too familiar, that can help you out after this video.
video is completed so you can get to that process of having your full financial situation looked up right in front of you so that way we can know where to start cutting expenses and once you start cutting expenses that's going to be where you're going to be having a bigger impact on your financial situation of living paycheck to paycheck because once you can start cutting out eating out entertainment um, groceries um, everything else little bits here and there you can start having that money rolled over the next step after having that budget set up is to have an emergency fund put together because the emergency fund will help you protect against anything unforeseen so if you are in the next step which is attacking that debt you can be in a couple different situations if you just have the student loan of course you can attack the student loan but if you have other debts as well there's a method called the debt snowball method so i will link up the debt snowball video up here again you can check that out after this video is completed uh, so that way you can have a better understanding of how the debt snowball works so if all of your debt has been taken care of aside from the student loan now we want to talk about how to actually have a bigger impact on your student loan debt and of course if you had everything else paid off we have more money towards attacking our student loans so what i want to do is actually hop on the computer so i can show you a little bit more of what i mean so what we're going to do is here on the computer as you can see i actually have uh cfsi up here loaded so definitely check out that website I, like i mentioned i have a link in the description box down below so you guys can check them out so i have a couple tabs up here so what i wanted to do first was actually bring up what the average is for student loan debt so here on studentloanhero.com, you're gonna see that the average student loan uh, debt of 2016 was $37,172. Now that's definitely a lot of money. So then I also wanted to find out what the average is for the interest rate. So I went to studentaid.ed.gov, and on here you're gonna see that the direct uh, unsubsidized loans for undergrads are, undergrads are 4.45%. So what I wanted to do was put that into a calculator and let's get some information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that information already preset over here for us. Um, so that 4.75% interest rate, I did it for the 10 years because that's the average. Uh, don't worry about the minimum payment there. Um, and then we have it enrolled in payment and then it's you know bachelor's degree program uh, for, with a four year college attendance. So on here, you're gonna see that the amount that you're gonna be paying on a monthly basis is $389.74 for a total of 120 months. And that's if you're not trying to lower your payments, which then increases the amount of time that you have to pay for that loan, which also increases the amount of interest that you're gonna pay too. So keep that in mind. Don't overextend it by lowering the amount that you have to pay every month, because that just means you're gonna have to pay it for a much longer time and also pay a lot more interest. So with this setup right here it says the accumulative payments in total are going to be forty six thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars that you're going to pay in that 10 year period with nine thousand five hundred and ninety six dollars of that being the interest that you had to pay on top of the original balance so we want to look at how big of an impact can we actually have on our debt every single month. So I love doing the $100 method because the $100 to me, a lot of people can either cut that out of their expenses if they really pay attention or they can work a side hustle and actually earn an additional $100 in a given month. So we're gonna see the type of impact $100 can have on your student loans. But just in case people are curious, this website is finaid.org, so you guys can check that out. Um, I'll put a link in the description box down below. So on this calculator, what we're gonna do is we have all the information pre-plugged in here uh, to just make it a little easier. I have the $100 payment every single month that you're gonna pay extra on, right? So we're gonna go ahead and skip down to this uh, area over here. I kind of highlighted it to hopefully make it a little easier to see. So the number of payments here that you're gonna be making is 91 months of payments instead of the 120. And it shows over here the uh, amount that you're gonna pay in interest and the overall amount that you're gonna pay. But the most important part is down here where it says savings. So your repayment savings is actually gonna be $2,863.29. Um, and that is a lot of money. And then the other big portion of it too is that you're actually gonna cut down your loan term uh, by 2.4 years. That's 24% of the loan date that you have that you're actually cutting off just by putting $100 every single month. One very important piece of information that I feel is very critical when it comes to paying extra towards your debt. So making sure that when you pay extra towards your student loan debt, that that money is going towards the principal only and not towards the actual payments on your monthly payment plan. Because then that way, the amount that you're putting extra towards attacks the actual principal, which then affects how much you get charged in interest and will actually have a greater impact for you. So make sure that you put it towards your principal only. And if you don't know how, definitely contact your uh, provider for the loan. So that way they can give you the proper information on how to actually put 
put it towards the uh, principal only and again, not the payments. So let's go ahead and say that you wanna actually attack more because let's say you are out of debt entirely minus your student loan so you can add more to it. Let's say that you put $300 every single month. Now with $300, you're gonna see an even bigger impact of course. You're gonna save over $5,265 in interest and then that's gonna cut your loan time in half. Now, I don't know about you, but if I can save $1,000 a year just by paying extra towards my student loans, I would definitely want to do that. And you can definitely do the same. So the best thing about this is if you have more money to be able to attack towards that loan, more than the $300, and you can get rid of your student loan even faster, you're actually going to open up your cash flow that much more. Because again, remember, the original monthly payment was $389. Imagine having that much money extra every single month to be able to do other things with, such as building wealth or being able to do things that you want to do without having to worry about debt. So one of the things I implore you to do is actually talk to other friends or family members around you and ask them about their student loan situation if they've been out of college for a couple of years. So you can get a real good insight of what it's like for other people to have this type of loan be with them for such a long time. I guarantee you're gonna get some great information that's gonna really put a fire in you to be able to help attack and pay off this debt that much faster. So as I mentioned earlier, leave me a comment in the comment section down below if you just got out of college and are in the process of wanting to pay extra towards your student loans. So if you're actually still getting ready to go to college and not yet in that process of collecting debt, definitely check out uh, this video from Valentine from Plenteous of Money. He's actually gonna be talking about ways to help avoid collecting a lot of student loan debt. So that way, hopefully you don't get into this process of needing to pay off those student loans. So definitely check out his video up above. I'll also have his video in the description box down below for you to be able to check out. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you know anyone that has recently got out of college and is in that process of paying off student loans, definitely share this video out with them. Hopefully they can get some value out of this so that way they can become financial free and if you did get this video from a family member or a friend let me know in that comment section down below thank you so much for watching and don't forget to if you're new here definitely consider subscribing and thank you so much fellow wealth builders for watching and have a great day all right if you made it to the end of this video and you would like to continue binge watching i have two additional videos for you here today the top video is going to be my most recent release and then the bottom video is going to be the one that youtube recommends for you if you'd like to continue watching